Hello everyone. We had seen principal component analysis PCA in our previous lecture, right? Uh, in this session, we're going to understand the practical implication of PCA. In that lecture, I haven't shown you any, you know, practical de demo for that. But in this session, we will see a small demo on PCA. And you already know that PCA is used in dimension reduction and unsupervised learning, right? Uh, throughout this chapter, unsupervised learning, we will use this PCA uh, as our, you can say, the core concept so that we can build up, you know, the solution for more uh, critical problem of machine learning. Um, so we're going to see um, the practical demo of PCA and the usual library that we use for uh, any uh, machine learning algorithm. We're going to use the same library here, right? So I'll use the uh, data set. I, will, I, I don't have any CSV file or any other, but I'm going to use the inbuilt data set of scikit-learn. Uh, that is breast cancer, uh, where we have some malignant tumors and we have benign tumors, and we're gonna uh, see how we can reduce that data set to an extent, right? We, we we are not going to use any classification or any prediction algorithm to predict something or to classify something, but instead we're gonna use uh, a reduction algorithm, okay? PCA we will reduce the data set size, uh, data set uh, dimension, so that we can uh, we can we can then use that uh, you know data set for uh, prediction or for any classification uh, purpose okay so i'm going to use i hope you can see it um, i don't think i can uh, resize it because uh, uh, let me just yeah i can do this okay and uh, i think i can do this too so i'm going to re uh, i'm going to import the libraries here import matplotlib um, dot pi pi plot as PLT. This is going. This library is basically used for uh, for for our uh, graph. So we're gonna um, create our graph with the help of this matplotlib library. Okay, and then we're gonna import pandas as pd. Import numpy as np. Import seaborn. I don't think I need this seaborn. Yeah, I need heat map. So because of that, uh, I had to. Uh, import this library as well. So import Seaborn as SNS and then uh, the the usual inline for Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so these libraries are, are, are being pretty much imported now. And now I'm going to import the data set that I need. So from sklearn, so the data set is inside the sklearn data set. So sklearn data sets and then import load underscore breast underscore cancer okay this is gonna load the data set and then i'll say I'll, I'll use the variable as tumor equals to load breast cancer so i'm going to use uh, this variable tumor to load my data set and uh, you can check it out tumor dot dot keys that what kind of you know the keys they have the what kind of attributes this data set possess so it possess data target target name description feature names and file name right so i'm going to use tumor dot uh, desr or let me just print it print cancer and to use this this uh, this keys i'm going to use square bracket and i'll say de SCR and you can see that uh, yeah the cancer instead of cancer I need to have this so you can see that it have 569 instances and uh, basically it having the 30 attributes so it is 569 cross 30 okay so it is th th this kit this could be rows and this could be columns so th this this is completely 569 cross 30 metrics okay um, so I want to reduce this this 30 to some a lower dimension and we're gonna see that okay so you can see we have a malignant and uh, some benign uh, um, uh, classification these are the classes and for classification algorithm you just have to classify it with the help of this malignant and benign okay and these are the different statistics 
the mean uh, standard error and, uh, and other stuff. So we have 212 malignant and 357 benign uh, samples inside the data set and these all are the information about the data set who had created other references and stuff right. So we will see the next thing. The next thing is we will have to we have to create a data frame uh, so that we can cut out the data and cut out the um, the, the feature name okay. So I will use df for data frame and I will say pd for uh, pandas. And I'll say data frame, and I'm going to use again tumor, and I need the key as data. So I'm I'm using the key uh, data, and the next thing is I need a column. So this is going to be like rows and columns. So this column I need is tumor, and I'll use feature. Uh, what is the name I just have to see that so we have I think feature name underscore name right so I'm going to copy it and then paste it here so this is my second key and this is basically row and column so my data frame is now having data and a feature name and I'm going to use df to see that Oh, I actually df will give me all those uh, you know 569 samples so to cut it down I'll say df dot head and then you can see only five of them okay so you can see here there are five rows and 30 columns so it is a 30 dimension okay 30 dimension uh, to visualize this we I need a 30 dimension space to represent all these numeric data point and this is not possible for me this is in high dimension space I cannot I basically I cannot do it the the dimension that we can do is we can go for two dimension three dimension or maybe uh, to certain extent we can go for four dimension but to go for like six seven it is going to be pretty hard for me it is going to be very complex for me i cannot do that right so i need to reduce this higher dimension to a lower dimension and more precisely i need i need a two dimension to represent it okay i can see that so uh, i'll i'll use an now uh, PCA to reduce that this dimension but as I told you in PCA uh, chapter that uh, before uh, go for PCA you need to do something called as feature scaling okay and you know that feature scaling is basically used to uh, make the correlated data uh, or correlation so if if the this this particular column is having 100 100 122 132 130 but this column is having like 1000 2000 4000 then these these features are not going to be like correlated i need a correlated correlated data so i have to reduce this 1000 to to an extent of 122 or uh, this 2000 to like uh, 100 like this 3000 to like 110 like that okay i need to reduce that this that uh, that numeric data to uh, uh so that these two columns or these these many columns these 30 columns are get correlated with each other that is the feature scaling if you don't know then please refer the notes that you you have and uh, we they have the great explanation on feature scaling okay we had seen the range problem there as so you already know that okay uh, so I'm going to use feature scaling before go for uh, you know before going for uh, this reduction this PCA so I'll say from so I have to use standard scalar for this feature scaling so I'll use from sklearn dot preprocessing actually we are doing preprocessing here pre this is not just for you know this feature scaling it, it can be used to uh, do for it, it can be very helpful for noise data also if you're having any miss, missing column if you have null values or like that i i can use this pre processing there also so from sklearn dot pre processing I'm, I'm going to import standard and then i think if this takes the tab <laughs> it is not taking yeah it is it takes so it imported the standard scalar here and i'm going to use a variable scalar here and then I'll say so uh, the standard scalar function is going to be you know assigned to scalar now so again so scalar is now have all the the, the function the the parameters that is there in the standard scalar it is now with the uh, with the scalar we have okay and then I'm going to use this scalar to fit my data frame I'll just use scalar dot fit and I'll say the F and that's it okay you can see the, uh, the we have a mean is true and standard deviation is equals to true. 
so your data frame is is being now scaled okay it has been scaled now i need this scaled uh, you know data to be transformed again inside my data frame so uh, what i'm going to do i'll use an another variable to do it so i'll say scale data uh, scale data equals to scalar dot transform so that so that it, it transformed inside the data frame again so tf and you can see that I'll call the scaled data and that's it okay so um, it is not going to be viewed properly but now all these values can you see the values are very nearby to each other like 1.26 2.29 1.68 1.0 they are very near we don't have any value like thousand like two thousand like three thousand or hundred two hundred three we don't have that you can see all these values are in the decimal format 1.0 1.2 minus 2.0 but here you can see we have a larger values here uh, thousand uh, 1300 132 like that but we we have scaled it we have transformed it again inside the data set so that uh, you can we, we have a feature scaling property here okay and now i'm going to use my pca so this part is going to be actual pca now uh, so i'll use again a library to import the pca uh, from sklearn so from sklearn i'm again going to use so you can see that we are using dimensionality reduction we are reducing something and that's why i need a special library for that so we scale the circuit we have decomposition okay we have decomposition to import the pca okay so this sklearn is having decomposition specifically meant for uh, uh, in reducing the data set we have this decomposition and inside that we have PCA so I'm using this sklearn dot decomposition inside that we have PCA in a very similar way we have LDA and factor analysis which is also inside the the this library okay so I'll write PCA equals to now PCA if I can use shift tab but um, however yeah you can see PCA is giving you some tooltip here so PCA needs what it needs it needs principal components here so what kind of principal how many components you need so i'll use two and this is the complete description for it you can check it out if you have you know if you are pretty much interested so you can see all this documentation here and we have pretty much good references uh, you can also see the uh, the example that they had shown you here that you can see pca n components equals to one they had taken one i'm i'm going to use two okay and then what i need i need to fit my data data frame or whatever the column that you had taken okay and then you will see that uh, uh, that it 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 is not being shown over here but it is going to reduce the uh, the data set column okay the dimension it is going to be reduces so pca and i'm going to use n underscore components and i'll say two and then i'll say pca dot fit pca dot fit what i need to fit is the scaled data this one okay so i'm going to copy this so i need to copy this and i'll paste it over here so i'm using pc on the scaled data here and i'm going to hit okay and you can see it has been uh, it has been processed here and now i'm going to use something called as transform to reflect into the scale data so i'm going to use pca new equals to pca dot transform and uh, I'll say scaled data okay and this PCA new again you can check it out that PCA new had had completely scaled down it and if you want to see the see the thing then we can compare that we can compare this PCA new with the scale data so we, we can have the shape function here so scaled data if you see scale data dot shape if you see here it is 569 cross 30 dimension so so it is the uh, row and column so it is of the 30 dimension but now if you see pca new dot shape you can see that it is 569 cross 2 so it is two dimension so we have reduced this from 30 dimension to uh, to a two dimension okay it is easy for me to visualize it now and uh, for visualization purpose i can i can use uh, the the matplotlib here so i'll use matplotlib to create this graph so i'll use plt dot figure 
to re to size my figure so i'll use figure size uh, to get a canvas of figure size equals to i'm going to use 10 by 8 and then i'll say the scatter i'll use plt dot scatter function to get my pca new pca new and i'll use the column and rows so this is the rows and column and the other thing is pca new for the uh, the other component okay so these are my principal component zero and principal principal component one okay these are the two principal component that i want and c equals to i'm going to use tumor for my uh, column name target okay so I'm, I'm 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 making this out this principal component zero and principal component principal component second on the column name target i'm using this feature target and i'm using this principal component one and two on that on that column okay so when you Oh, I need another uh, line for labeling it out. So x label equals to, I'm sorry, x label equals to first principal component. Okay, and I'll just copy this and I paste it for y label. So this is second and when you run this you will see that and you can see this this is the target and it is easily being just to resize it it is easily classify here that uh, these are the two principal component by the way so this is my first principal component this is second principal component and what I preci precisely wanted I want to see these principal component and what you can do is you can simply write here PCA new or just uh, PCA dot components and uh, I'm sorry PCA components and you can see these are the principal component uh, values that is there inside this first and second principal component okay now you can use any classification algorithm to separate out these are two clusters that you can see and it has been reduced from 30 dimension to two dimension only and now you can have a simple uh, smooth line over here to just uh, you know classify that this is the benign cancer and this is malignant cancer okay this is the easy way and what are these two principal components that we had taken you can you can you can compare that or you can uh, grab that two principal component from your data frame so i'm going to use a df pca equals to pd dot data frame and i i want my component so i'll use pca dot uh, components underscore i need column equals to cancer oh, i'm sorry column equals to tumor and i'll use feature all the features feature news and simply write dp ca and you can see these are the two principal component that i that i talked about zero and one that is there this is first principal component second principal component and these are the values that i was talking about so these this is my mu actually if if i want to say these are this is my mu1 and mu2 and they are they are correlated with each other okay and uh, these are two principal components zero one and you can have a, a heat map to see that how these features are uh, how internally they are correlated with each other okay you can take a heat map and can check check that out. Uh, so in this session, you have seen uh, the PCA practical uh, implications that how we can use uh, any data set and how we can reduce the uh, data data set dimension. And we had precisely seen that this 569 cross 30 dimension is being changed to 569 cross 2, that is higher dimension to lower dimension. Okay. So now you can use this uh, this PCA here here this PCA new to fit to any prediction algorithm or to fit any classification algorithm. Now you don't need to use the scaled data or the complete data frame here, this complete data frame, um, because if you do that, then there might be a problem, there might be a problem of dimension, the higher dimension, because you are using 30 dimension, which is not, uh, which is not going to give you the, the, the aspect of result that you want. But instead of, 
in, but instead of using df the complete df you can use either scale data and more precisely instead of using scale data you use the this pca new okay instead of using df or the scale data you use this pca new which is the lower dimension of data okay now we can use for prediction algorithm or for any classification algorithm i hope you understand it thank you so much for listening to me if you have any doubt you can check me out on um, on the comment section i will be happy to help you thank you so much